Hello, I'm Graham Sewell from the University of Melbourne, and I'm going to talk to you about my book, which is being published by Routledge on the 21st of May, 2021, and it's called Surveillance, a Key Idea for Business and Society. It just so happens that here in Australia, the very week that it's published is also National Privacy Week, so its publication is quite topical. I'm just going to answer a few questions on the book and uh, spend some time giving you an idea about what it contains. Well, let's get straight down to business with the first question. What prompted you to write the book? Well, that's, I suppose it's a great place to start, isn't it? And uh, we say that everybody's got at least one book in them, don't we? Well, if I had one book in me, it would definitely be this one because I've been writing and researching, writing about and researching surveillance for nearly 30 years now. And in that time, it's always been in the news. It's always been topical. But our concerns have uh, ebbed and flowed as new technologies have emerged, whether it's um, closed circuit television in our city streets or whether it's the rise of smartphones or most recently, of course, the, uh, the rise of social media platforms and uh, what you might call ubiquitous computing and therefore ubiqu ubiquitous surveillance. Now, all of those are forms of surveillance or at least can be used for them, but I'm more concerned about what you might call the underlying or the perennial concerns about surveillance, in particular, why we do it and what its consequences are for us as both people who are watched and watchers ourselves. Now let's deal with the first of those, its purpose, if you like. Well, I break that down into two main areas. The first is that surveillance classifies us as members of particular groups. Uh, a good worker or a bad worker, an upstanding citizen or a criminal. But also its second purpose within those is to evaluate us within those, those categories, if you like. How good an employee are we? How bad a criminal are we? And that lends to us being ranked uh, in a relative sense about who's the best and who's the worst. Okay, so surveillance classifies and it evaluates. But what are the consequences of that for us? Well, the consequence that I focus on in the book is the way in which it turns us from subjects, you know, all our glorious diversity as human beings into objects in the sense that we are, we are known almost exclusively through that classification and evaluation process. And that turns us from subjects into objects objects which are to be used perhaps for instrumental purposes, for greater productivity, for greater social cohesion, whatever you want to call it. So those are the purposes and those are the consequences. And in the book, I trace how those are quite consistent across historical periods, but also quite consistent across the emergence of different types of new technology. Now, that's not to say that, that, that's not to say that, that new technology isn't important, and brings about new kinds of possibilities in terms of the intensity or the reach of surveillance. But throughout the book, I keep in mind those two basic issues, the consequences and the purposes.